Up until this time, as I mentioned, hardware description languages were used for simulation. So there were two separate efforts. There was the uh, schematic capture, which allowed a, an engineer to enter the design, and there was simulation, which allowed an engineer to simulate the various possibilities and make sure that the design was working correctly. But it was still the schematic capture that was used to create the physical design, whether it was the printed circuit board or the integrated circuit. Now, in 1981, a lot of very smart people created a company called Silicon Compilers. And their goal was to create a system whereby an engineer could enter a very high-level description of a chip. And at the end, it would, that high-level description would run through the silicon compiler, and at the end would be a physical layout that could be taken directly to production in, in a semiconductor fab. And so this was very analogous to compilers in software, where in compilers you write uh, uh, high-level description, fairly high-level description in C or C++. And what comes out is the object code, the ones and zeros the, that it is executable by the processor. And how that's done and how it's optimized is not a great concern to the programmer. Well, that was the idea of silicon compilers. And their vision, that their stated vision, was to customize VLSI designs with turnkey simplicity. They had, as I said, a lot of very smart people from Caltech. They also had some very smart people from Intel. But essentially, this required a big leap in technologies. And I say technologies with uh, plural technology, rather than technology singular, because really what they were trying to do was, was invent and perfect a lot of technologies. Companies have done this several times. Uh, people have gotten very excited. and. Uh, it's very difficult because if any one of those technologies does not pan out, the entire system doesn't work. So in 1986, while silicon compilers were, uh, people were still working on getting their product out, uh, Synopsys was formed. Synopsys said instead of tackling this huge problem from high level description down to physical level, they said, let's take a very doable problem and take a fairly high level description, something called RTL, or register transfer logic, where a design is described using an HDL, and it's described using registers, essentially flip-flops. Another way of looking at it is state machines. Everything is clocked. In a behavioral level description, typically you don't have clocks. You just design things in terms of algorithms and blocks. And how it gets implemented in hardware is of no concern to the designer writing the code. With an RTL description, the designer needs to understand the clock speed and how state machines are created and how flip-flops work and Boolean equations. Doesn't need to understand where the NANDs and NORs go. So it's a level above what's called the gate level description, which is NANDs and NORs. So Synopsis said, let's take an RTL description and synthesize it down to a gate level description. And the technology for doing this came from General Electric. Now, I want to show the comparison there, even though lots of great work is done in universities. In this case, a bunch of tech, uh, some technology and technologists from universities just simply had too big a, a goal. And Synopsys, being somewhat practical, coming from General Electric, those people, said, let's do something practical that we know we can do, that we know we can get a product out the door. And the silicon compilers people, from what I remember, were saying, why are you tackling such a small problem? Who's really going to need this synthesis from a fairly high level to a fairly low level? What people need is very high level to very low level. But in reality, Synopsys realized that although the market for Synopsys tools were much smaller, the potential market, were much smaller than the potential market for silicon compilers, they also knew that their problem could be done, could be productized, could be released to market within a reasonable time, with a reasonable number of resources, people, costs. And they did. They produced this tool, and it became very successful, and basically started synthesis, where uh, at this point, schematics started going away, specifically for integrated circuits. And nowadays, I, would, I can comfortably say that I don't think there are any integrated circuit designs done using schematics. They're all done using HDLs. And 
a big advantage that fell out of this is that the same languages that are used for simulation, Verilog and VHDL, can now be used for synthesis. So there's no longer the uh, inefficiencies of translating manually back and forth between a schematic and an HDL. There's no need to map that by hand. Now the schematics are gone and the HDL is written and the essentially the schematics or the net lists are created from that for both synthesis to be able to synthesize. Nowadays synthesis is getting much closer to the physical layer and the level at which you can write this code is much closer to the behavioral level. So really, uh, it accomplishes the combining of, soft, of sim simulation and synthesis in one set of tools using one language to describe the design. And the goal of synthesis, rather than starting out with this huge goal and failing, uh, the synthesis companies have started out with this much more practical goal and are expanding. And even today, um, some 25 years later uh, that we have not reached the, the uh, goals that silicon compilers had, although we're getting much closer. So this next slide shows the diagram of, uh, of what we're looking at in the future. The future, as everyone seems to agree, is electronic system level design. So electronic system level has many different definitions, and that's one of the problems. It's, it's a big buzzword. I do believe it is the future. And in very, very general terms, it, it is as the diagram describes. It's starting out with a system description using some ESL, electronic system level, language, just like uh, similar to HDLs, but in, at a higher level. And from that, partitioning the design into hardware and software. So in other words, automatically figuring out which parts of the design ought to be in hardware uh, using state machines and processors, and which part of the design, and, and obviously other structures, and which part of the design should be in software, and automatically creating the software for that design, and automatically creating perhaps the HDL description of that design. Now that's a very high level view and that's really the only view that's possible because it, talking to different experts, different researchers, different companies, you'll find that the specifics vary on how to do this. As far as ESL languages, uh, there's a number of languages that have been proposed and are being proposed for this high level description. There's C, C++, Synlib, Superlog, System C, System Verilog, this shows one of the issues that still remain. ESL has been a buzzword for at least five years, I would say. Uh, has gotten significant uh, investment. Companies have sprung up. Uh, tools have been developed. And yet there's still not an agreement on what the language should be. Uh, there's proponents of all of them. You'll notice that the languages Synlib and Superlib are promoted, were promoted by companies that no longer exist. And for all practical purposes, those efforts have gone away. And what remains are the other four languages, much disagreement about which ones are useful for uh, this effort. I also include their UML, the Universal Modeling Language. The idea behind UML, which is totally a software effort, but the, it's an effort to write software at a higher level, which is obviously a component of electronic system level design. UML their motto, I would say, is that a picture is worth a thousand words. I don't know if that's an official motto, but I've certainly seen that to describe UML. But my question is, is it really? Because in UML, high-level blocks are used to describe software architecture. And arrows are drawn with little people representing actors or agents, and inputs are described and outputs are described. And I, I'm I believe that that is useful for describing the high-level architecture of a software system. There's some efforts now to take those diagrams and synthesize code, C code, C++ code, Java code from those diagrams. The problem as I see it here is that the software industry is moving in a direction opposite to the way the hardware industry has moved. And I, having, having seen both, prefer the way the hardware industry has moved. What's happened in hardware 
is we've gone from drawing diagrams to text-based descriptions. And the, that helps in so many ways. It helps with the ability to do simulation, as I mentioned, synthesis, with documentation, with organization. It's much easier to organize hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of files, each with subroutines or modules in them, and examine them and use uh, tools that can search through them and represent them in different ways. It's much easier to do that in hardware than it is to draw pages and pages of schematics. And with today's integrated circuits having millions of transistors and millions of logic gates, the, the drawing schematics for those things would be a huge stack of papers that would be very, very difficult to represent all the information that needed to be represented and to search it and to go through it, even if it's electronically uh, done, because it's visual. And there's only so much information that your mind can take in looking at a visual representation. Visual representation is great for looking at small pieces of something in a lot of detail. So with UML, the programmers, the software industry, at least the people promoting UML, are going from text-based uh, design, programming languages, which we've discovered in the hardware field is excellent, to a graphics-based design methodology, which we've discovered is just there's just too much information to keep track of, too difficult to represent it graphically. So I personally don't think that that's the way that things are going to go.